Welcome back to Requirements Engineering. Today we'll talk about quality requirements. Quality. Let that sink in for a moment while I write down the title. Why did I say, let that sink in for a moment? People have very different understandings of what quality means for a specific software system. I used to open this talk by showing two mobile phones, an iPhone and an Android phone, and asking people which one they thought was higher quality. And of course, that choice came back to personal preferences, because at this point of development, they're pretty even overall in their quality. Now, if you were a fan of how Apple products integrate all their services, then you may have a preference for the iPhone. If you are a fan of tinkering yourself with your phone and maybe developing your own apps, then maybe you prefer an Android phone. And those qualities are not absolute. So when you define the quality requirements for your system, the most important choice you have to make first is what kind of quality model are we talking about? So you have to choose your quality model. But don't worry, you don't have to make it up from scratch. We do have a standard for it that you can seek inspiration from and that we tend to use in a lot of projects. So there is the ISO 25010, which provides you standard software quality models. So I recommend looking into that one. It essentially gives you an overview of what are the high level quality attributes and quality characteristics. We're not going to go through that ISO standard in this lecture, because that makes more sense when we have slides where I can show the submodels of the ISO 25010. What we will look into is how do I specify individual quality requirements? So when I think about typical quality attributes like performance, usability, maintainability, reliability, accessibility, and so on and so forth. How do I note down a requirement for this? Let's start with a performance requirement. My requirement is the, sh the system should respond fast. OK. Now imagine I'm passing this requirement on to my designers and my implementers. What are they going to come back with? A fast system? A really fast system? An incredibly fast system? Most likely they're going to come back with a question, like how fast is fast for you? What does fast mean in the context of the system that you're developing? Are we talking about this giant database algorithm in the back where it's reasonable to consider a two-second response still as very fast? Or are we talking about a little mobile game or even more intense, a safety critical system that needs to react in nanoseconds to provide safety for the surroundings? So depending on the type of system and the application context, the definition of what fast is can vary wildly. So we can have this as the initial description. But then we also want to have a metric that tells us how fast is fast. And that metric, in our case, we say response time should be less than half a second. What we need to define next is how are we going to measure that? Like, 
response time from when? When the user clicks or when the system starts computing? Like when exactly do we do that? And so the next part to define, oops, typo, that's getting worse. the measurement. And we probably have some benchmark tests that we've performed in the past with very precise instructions. So we can just reference that one here. Or it may be a textual description that says 25 test users are going to carry out the use case is 34 and 35, and if the response time is less than half a second, then this is accomplished. Now, the last thing, there's one fourth thing that we want to denote in all of our quality requirements. Any guesses what that could be? We know the description, we know what precisely we want to be able to measure, and we talked about how we want to measure it. Take a step back. What was the most important question? What's the most important question in requirements engineering? Yeah, why? The most important question in requirements engineering is why. So why should the system respond fast? So number four is the rationale. And we could state that otherwise the user will switch to a different service. So this is a risk that we know we'd be running if we couldn't fulfill this quality requirement. So always know your whys. This is pretty much the structure, how you could denote every single quality requirement. Now you may say, come on, it's an easy one. Performance, really? We can just put numbers on it and we're done. Let's try something else, something where it's harder to put numbers on. What would we do with usability? The system should be easy to use. Hmm. What's going to be the number? What's going to be the metric that we measure here? Hmm. For qualitative requirements of this kind, I have two ways to break them down and measure them. One way is to detail them into sub-requirements where I can find a precise metric. So that could be for usability that I decide. Easy to use for me means the font size is large enough to read. The colors have a contrast that does not cause a flimmer contrast for the person that looks at it. The system should have usage processes or use cases that I can, can, that I can complete in less than seven clicks. All of those would be things I can put metrics on. So I can either use that way to break it down, or I can go a different route. I can leave it as a qualitative one and I have to define a routine that would tell me when is it good enough, what is easy to use. So if I leave it on a qualitative level, that means I need a representative user group that rates the system after use and says, yep, this is easy enough to use. So either break it down into countable things or say test user group Come on, Pen. 90% of test user group rated ease of use at a 9 out of 10. So that could be my, my metric. And then the measurement. 
would be the test routine. Take 100 beta testers. have them rate the system after 15 minutes of use. Finally, the rationale. We don't want to forget our whys. And it's just user retention. To be honest, user retention Otherwise, the user will switch to a different service. That's a very common rationale for a lot of our quality characteristics. If the system is not at that level of quality, then the user is probably going to walk off and use some competitor system that does the same thing. But there could be more differentiated ones, for example, for reliability and robustness and for security and safety. So here are two examples, one where I have a direct metric that can respond to what I'm asking for in the description, and one where I go a different route of having a number of users rate my system to say whether it fulfills a certain quality. Now go try that out for at least 10 different quality characteristics.